Hey up lads and lasses, Dan Fong here, back again with some more Infinite Lagrange. Today I wanted a quick uh, tier list, I've been asked this one quite a few times over the last sort of month or so, um, and it's a tier list of all of the AA ships. Now I've included all of the AA main ships, I've included a couple that do quite good AA, but they're not specifically AA design, you know, the um, Ruby Ion in example here. Uh, and I'm not including any of the super capitals because they're really modular dependent like the CTG has got good AA capabilities But you need the module to be able to sort of make that work um, So I, I felt it doesn't really fit into this because this is um, the, These are considerably easier to get than some of those uh, modules for battle cruisers the winter SAR especially and the AC721 missiles pretty uh, popular as well a lot of players seem to have that one so, without further ado, let's kick it off and we'll talk about the AC721. So, the AC721, I think all of the variants do a little bit of AA, but the missile variant specifically here is the one I want to talk about because it is, it is superior to the others. Its AA capability is actually quite good. It's, it's not like perfect, amazing AA, uh, but you know, for the CP cost of it, and you can get them in, and they do anti, uh, like, they'll hit back row. So if people are running things like, you know, Stinger and stuff like that, AC721s actually do really well tearing them apart. So you get a little bit of a nice mix here of some decent anti sort of frigate damage at the same time as getting a decent amount of AA. So I'm going to put that to start us off in A tier. May come back to it a bit later on, we'll move it around, but I'm pretty certain it's going to stay roughly in that A tier section. It's, like I said, it's just really good at what it does. Next up, we have the Callisto UAV. I have mentioned this previously in my tier rating, um, and I rate it quite high. I rate it higher than the base Callisto, and the reason for that is. It does almost as much damage to ships as the base Callisto, but you're getting this added AA, and it's literally the damage difference between the base Callisto and the UAV Callisto. It's like five, ten percent damage difference. It really isn't that much. Whereas now you're getting like a pretty substantial amount of anti-air damage. So I actually think the Callisto UAV is really good. Um, however. I don't feel it's quite as good as the AC721. So it's going to go to the B tier in this category for anti air. Likewise, we have the Light Cone AA. Now, to be fair to it, both all three variants of the Light Cone have AA capability. They all come with AA UAVs, but the AA UAVs don't seem to be where the damage really lies on these things. It seems to be the missiles, because if you look at the assault and the generic, and the anti-air damage that they both deal, they're very similar in the damage output of that AA damage. And when you add in the light cone, it does considerably better. So it must be due to the fact that the missile system on the light cone AA is actually where the most of the damage is coming from. I'm also going to put this into B tier. It's mostly due to the fact that for its CP cost, Unlike the Callisto, I mean the Callisto might even go ahead of it technically because it's bringing its own damage in, but the Light Cone's not doing any of that. It's got terrible damage, and its AA damage isn't just worth it for the CP cost of bringing them in because uh, they are CP heavy, uh, unfortunately. They do, however, uh, bring in like a really nice amount of sort of support for the fleet. So you've got you know the buff that increases. Uh, fighter hit rates and that kind of thing which is actually really nice on it at the same time you can also buff it up so it has intercept and it gets really really high intercept on it as well which does make it really good as well um so it's not terrible but in terms of aa damage potential it's going in b tier because it's about b tier in its damage output of aa and i am trying to specifically just talk about the aa damage here if you want like the more in-depth on the like the ship and like the Callisto, for example, watch the tier list where I go through the Callisto UAV uh, UAV and or the light cone, and now uh, speak more in depth about its weapon systems and anti uh, fleet capability. 
We have the Mer SAA. I I tried this out and it 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 wasn't good like at all. I couldn't. I tried multiple different module loadouts on it where you're going like more into the crit, more into the damage and that kind of thing, and I just couldn't get it to do substantial AA damage when I was testing it whatsoever. It was a little bit unfortunate to be honest, because I was kind of hoping forward, looking forward to having another Mare S that you could use, because the generic variant with this giant missile system is great. Uh, so yeah, it was, a, it was a bit disappointed, basically. The Mare TAA, however, um, I am putting that up into A tier. Now the Mare TAA, uh, and I'm also going to include the Pulse variant in this, they both similar the pulse might be slightly better but um both of them really really good back row and they will just eat uh, craft alive that attack in your back row if you have a back row heavy fleet definitely check out the pulse or the uh the Merti aa the pulse is again it's slightly better but i wanted to specifically talk a bit more about the aa variants um uh, themselves and uh, the pulse isn't meant to be an AA variant. It just turns out that energy weapons seem to be really damn good at blowing stuff up that flies uh, quickly. So, Merti AA, not bad. Probably try the pulse if you got it. Both of them will work in the back row. Both of them will do a lot of work in the back row as well, protecting your fleet from AA. So definitely give those a uh, trial. Uh, definitely worth it. The poor Noma AA variant that comes with the AA UAVs, um, it's 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 tragically really bad, unfortunately. Um, I literally couldn't get it any damage out of it at all. It didn't matter what I was trying, and it's quite CP expensive. I think the the Noma like all the variants like nine CP or something. It's it's just so so no. And it doesn't do AA. Like I couldn't get this to work for the life of me. I tried it about five or six times against, you know, even like small, just throw some AA things at it, see if it even kills that. No, it couldn't even kill like small AA uh, aircraft cleans. It was, it was, <laughs> it was awful. The Predator AA. Um, is going in the back of C tier, unfortunately, very similar to the Nomas. It's UAV AAs and the light cones for the most part as well. The, the UAV AAs just don't seem to work. I am not entirely sure uh, why. I, I, I have, you know, pointed out to uh, NetEase that these things have UAVs, why aren't they fleet-wide protection? If they were fleet-wide, I bet they do really good in that position. You might start seeing people running Predator AAs instead of Predator Tactical, or you might even see some Gnomus uh, AA in fleets. Um, but yeah, currently, it's it's not looking good for them. Uh, they, just, they just don't work properly. I think the reason the Predators Gonna write, uh, gonna be up slightly higher at the moment. It's because it has got weapons that also shoot AA and they can do better uh, than the Noma does, which is a bit unfortunate. Again, especially at that CP cost. If you've got base Predator and the Predator AA, feel free to run it. It's an upgrade over the base Predator. You are getting some AA capability and you're getting more than the base Predator because the base Predator's only got missile systems, which are, I think, the anti frig destroyer off the top of my head. Um, and the damage on that is kind of like minimal, so you might as well take the AA Predator because it's got the same carrying capacity and that's really all you care about. If you've got the Tactical, obviously you're going to be running the Tactical in that slot. Uh, but yeah, not particularly good. The Ruby Ion Cannon, I'm going to put that at the top of B. Um, yeah, it's, it's really good. It's got decent damage output. And it's got really good anti-air and it's mid-row anti-air, which is actually quite useful because a lot of people are starting to run, uh, well, now my server, uh, the older veteran players, uh, have now got, you know, enough tech points and modules to run the likes of solar whales and stuff like that. So we're like becoming a bit more mid-row heavy than rear-row heavy, uh, which is like a bit of an interesting thing that's been sort of 
going on recently in uh, the servers I've been in. Um, so having rubies in those is actually been quite nice because you, you can the cheap, they bring good damage output, and they mid-row coverage of AA, so there you go. It's pretty decent. Definitely check out the Ruby Ion. Uh, again, like I said, it's not a specific AA variant, but I've added it to the list because I think the AA on it's, you know, worth mentioning. The Winged Hussar AA. S tier. It brings in the support the Light Cone does with the increased hit rates to frigate, uh, fr frigate fighters. Um, it's got plenty of evasion. It does quite nicely on the front row. It's 6 CP, which is huge, considering. Because um, recently, well, not recently, but we've worked out that targeting doesn't seem to be entirely random, and it seems to things like to target the higher CP cost of the ships within uh, the row. So if you have 60 CP of Winged Assault, which is 10 of them, but then you have 10 Tauruses on the front row, which is 80 CP, they, I think they're 8 CP each, they could be 90 CP. Um, and then, so they'll actually target the Winged Assault first, uh, sorry, the Taurus first, which means your Winged Assaults are just like safe completely. It's great. So they can bring like quite a reasonable amount of um, sort of front row support You've got fleet-wide support, and its AA is outstanding. The recent video that I uploaded, the hybrid fleet, have a look. It's about 40, 45% of my entire AA damage was dealt by the wing to SARS. I only had five of them in fleet. I had Mistral's T-800s in there, 45, 40, 45% of the damage was wing to SAR AA. That's how good they are. They are by far the best AA we currently have in game. Now the Xeno AA, I'm gonna put that at the top of A because I don't think it realistically compares to the Wing Tassar AA. It has got exceptionally good AA though. It's definitely better than the AC721. It's definitely better than the Murti AA. And that's because it has fleet wide AA and Oddly, the wing to side, which is only going to be row wide, I believe, uh, still seems to outperform it. So I am not entirely sure how that works out. Either way, the Xeno AA, it really does well against enemy fleets that have Corvettes in them, and it does really, really well in that situation. However, Fighters Bombers, it seems to struggle with a little bit more. Um, I don't know if maybe because it stops targeting air after it's taken Corvettes out, or whatever other reason. Something else to note as well is if you run the Xeno and you have air in your own fleet, it seems to seriously underperform in that situation where you know your Mistrals and your T800s are maybe providing more damage than the Xeno can, so they're knocking things out. Whereas in the example of Winged Assar, the Winged Assar is providing a hell of a lot of damage plus supporting those fighters as well. So. I do think it sits in A tier, and our S tier will be the Wing to Sar uh, for this one. But yeah, definitely let me know what you think in the comments down below. If there are any ship that I might have missed here, these are the the more the well the ones that are AA variants in themselves. They are you know classed as AA variants, and I got a couple in here that I personally think do quite well with AA, um, such as you know. The Ruby Ion uh, being in there. Uh, I, the Mare T, the uh, Pulse, I haven't got obviously the image here, but basically same position as that AA, maybe just ahead of it. Um, both of those really good, but they're not specifically you know designed for anti-air. The Callisto is kind of like a 50-50. It's kind of half designed for AA, half designed for blowing stuff up. Um, so yeah, but the Wing Tassar, 6 CP, tons of anti-air damage, plus support for fleet, does leave it up in that S tier rank. So, like I said, comments down below if you think I missed anything. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.